Today is the sixth day of Kwanzaa. The Nguza Saba principle for today is creativity. Kumba, to do always as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. Our guest, once again, is the recipient of numerous awards for scholarship, leadership, and service, in service in particular to our ongoing struggle to maintain and sustain our knowledge through our Black Studies departments throughout academia. He is the recipient of the Paul Robeson Zora Neale Hurston Award for Scholarly Work of African World Culture, the CLR James Award for Outstanding Publication of Scholarly Works that Advance the Discipline of Africana and Black Studies, the Presidential Award for Exemplary Service and Outstanding Contribution to the Field of Black Studies, all from the National Council for Black Studies, all of these awards. He is the subject of the book by Dr. Malefi Asante entitled Maulana Karinga, an Intellectual Portrait. He has published himself the following, Essays on Struggle, Position and Analysis. We want you to, again, not, this is not, Kawan is not an, is an isolation. So we want you to check out these books and read them throughout the year. Essays on Struggle, Position and Analysis. Kawaii and Questions of Life and Struggle, Ma'at, the Moral Ideal in Ancient Egypt, a Study in Classical African Ethics, Introduction to Black Studies, the fourth edition, the Husil, Sacred Wisdom of Ancient Egypt, Oduifa, the Ethical Teachings, and he's also working on another major work right now on the social and ethical philosophy of Malcolm X, entitled The Liberation Ethics of Malcolm X, Critical Consciousness, Moral Grounding, and transformative struggle. And of course, he's the chair of the organization, US, and the National Association of Kawaida Organizations and executive director of the African American Cultural Center and the Kawaida Institute of Pan African Studies, co chair as well of the Black Community Clergy and Labor Alliance, BCCLA. And of course, his students are so blessed to be in his presence as he is, continues to be professor and chair of the Department of Africana Studies at Cal State University, California State University, Long Beach. But he's been firing us up all week. This Kwanzaa, he is. Who better to talk about Kwanzaa with? Who better to be informed and made knowledgeable by than by the creator of Kwanzaa and the creator of the Nguza Saba and the author of the authoritative text, Kwanzaa, a celebration of family, community, and culture. So this sixth day, we greet him as we greet you. Habari Ghani, Dr. Maulana Karinga. Roomba, Reverend Matsumela. Thanks so much again for the invitation to come and talk and share with you and your audience uh, this beautiful holiday and, and the expansive meaning behind it. Because one of the things that is so important to me, as this has grown so much, is that it always maintains its integrity, its beauty, and its expansive meaning. The future of Kwanzaa depends upon African people all over the world holding to these three principles, maintaining the integrity, the beauty, and the expansive meaning. Not doing anything to divide or diminish it. No plastic, fruit, and things like that. Not using the menorah, Jewish menorah, when you can use a kinata, right? And not, not, not being quick about it. But to take your time with it, to think about it, to read it, to learn how to do it rightfully, and to see it as a great legacy that you can add to and, and build on and pass on to the next generation after generation. That's the important thing for us to see, because only Black people can make this a lived and living tradition worthy of the name and history African. And we have done that. They have done that. We have done that together, right? Practicing the principles that we talked about. So today's principle is Kuumba creativity, the sixth principle, Kuumba. And the text tells us hmm, that this means to do always as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited. This principle speaks in a larger sense, not oh. only to our always striving to make our own community constantly better, and more beautiful and beneficial, but also the world, because again, we live in the world, and what happens to the world affects us. Climate change, plunder, pollution, 
depletion, all of that affects what? The most vulnerable first and to the greatest extent. And we are among the most vulnerable, right? So this quiz is always, we put forth the possibility, again, of doing what our ancestors told us to do, to strive always to repair, renew, and remake the world, making it more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited. This we do in the spirit of the ancient African moral imperative of Saroj Ta. Saroj Ta means in ancient Egyptian language, to repair, renew, and remake the world, making it more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited. And it's interesting, I wrote Kurumba before I started studying ancient Egyptian teaching. And for this to coincide, the value of Kurumba, which Saruj Ta, right, is very beautiful indeed. So inherent in this concept of Saruj Ta is a call to heal ourselves and each other as well as the world. This is the real meaning of reparations for me. It's not simply about receiving money, although they owe us everything. They couldn't pay us enough. But it's also about the larger struggle to achieve justice, hold the oppressor accountable, and to wage a liberation struggle that leads to the radical repairing we would do to ourselves, society, and the world in the process of the struggle. In other words, I teach that we can only we repair, renew, and remake ourselves in the process and practice of repairing, renewing, and remaking the world that's oppressing and damaging us. We must, as Nana Franz Fanon taught us, heal ourselves in struggle, repair ourselves in resistance. We must do that, right? Now, the concept of Saruj Ta is rooted in the ethical teachings of our ancestors that we constantly injure ourselves, each other, and the world as a whole. Not only by what we do wrong, like people, but also by what we fail to do right. Listen, we damage the world by that, right? And all in it. Moreover, the damage we do to each other and the world, like the good we do, we do to and for ourselves. As Odu Ifa teaches, we live in a world and web of interdependence, as I've said all through this week. The Odu says, anyone who does good does it for herself, and anyone who does evil does it to himself. Or yeah, put in the in the in the, in the uh, clear, those who do good for them, pardon me, those who do good do it for themselves, and those who do evil do it to themselves, right? So we do damage to the world, ourselves and each other, in bears well. We do damage when we fail to follow the best of our ethical, ethical and spiritual teaching and instead use religion to disrespect and impose on us. We damage ourselves in the world when we try to justify unjust war, when we seize and occupy other people's land and claim a special religious or racial status above and beyond all people in the world and claim an immunity from criticism. We do damage to the world and to ourselves when we turn a blind eye to injustice, a deaf ear to truth, and an uncaring heart away from the suffering and pain around us and throughout the world. We do damage when we make material gain the meaning of all things, when we pollute, plunder, deplete, and destroy the environment and undermine the basis of, for life on earth, when we act in ways that dim and diminish the future for coming generations. Our ancestors in ancient Egypt taught, quote, we must think of eternity and plan for the future for those who will come after us. We must leave them a legacy of good. Indeed, an ancient teacher in the Hushia says, as I've said before, I did good for my community. I spoke truth. I did justice, for I knew the value of doing good. It would be a storehouse for those who would come after us. And Queen Hatshep said, said, I added to what was formerly done, for I wanted it to be said by those who come after me. How beautiful is that, which she has done for our people and the future. And so I say, we must do good for the future. And it means we must repair, remake, pardon me, we must repair, renew, and remake ourselves in the process and practice of repairing, renewing, and remaking the world. And that means, Kawita, 
teaches from Sarut Ta. It means to raise up what is in ruin, to repair what is damaged, to replenish what is depleted, to rejoin what is separated, to set right what is wrong, to strengthen what is weakened, and to make flourish that which is fragile and undeveloped. Am I, I'm in, Dr. Karenga. Do this for me, please, for our audience. Spell Saruj Ta. Saruj Ta, S E R U D J, Saruj Ta, T A. Saruj means to repair, renew, and remain. Ta is the world. Amen. The land, so the land in the world, okay? So, Amen. Lord Chap, I stay heading. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Asante Sana. We thank you for that knowledge, folks. The final day of Kwanzaa, tomorrow, Imani, faith. Today we say Habari Gani Kaumba. Tomorrow we say Habari Gani Imani. And so he's been with us all week. We're so thankful. We'll have him one more day tomorrow and we can have him. That's why we, we have this on video. So we'll have him forever. But we also are inspired, as he said, for us to restore ourselves. This really is something we can do year round. And we're going to be sharing the bibliography, the website, all the places you can go to learn more uh, when we close out tomorrow. Please spread the word. Tell everyone to join us tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Habarigani.